Hey folks, welcome to a flip side preview of Feud, The Seer's Prophecy, a strategically dynamic two-player card game coming to you from MindGate Studios. In Feud, The Seer's Prophecy, the players are the leaders of rival Viking villages, collecting resources with which to recruit units and gain insight and mobilizing them to coordinate attacks against the opponent's village is the name of the game and victory is achieved once your opponent's leader is reduced to zero health. One of the creative differences of the game, however, is that each player has all their cards available to them at any time, provided they have the resources to put them into play. For your first few games, you'll want to follow the rule book's guidelines for which cards to use in the tavern, but using the random setup guidelines in the book to either randomly or specifically choose what cards to include in the tavern is where the game will more than likely get its feet off the ground for you and where each game will begin to feel more different than the last. During setup, each player will sit across from each other at the table, place their village playmat in front of them, Determine who will be the first player and place their leader card on the central diamond-shaped node between the market and homestead regions of their village. The tavern is then placed to the right or left of the two villages and filled with the cards chosen randomly, specifically, or by following the rule book for your first few plays. Each player's tracking discs for their leader's health is placed on 10, and their village's silver and insight discs are placed on the tavern in the spaces provided with the second player starting with the game with one silver and one insight. Each player chooses one knowledge card from their deck and places it face down in their sacred grove. Now you're ready to begin the culmination of the feud. Feud the Seer's Prophecy is played with players taking alternating turns until one of the leader's health is reduced to zero. An active player's turn will consist of five phases. In the start of turn phase, any game effects triggered by the phrase at the start of your turn are resolved. In the move phase, players can move any of their units into adjacent zones with the leader's movement being restricted to one of the diamond shaped nodes in between the zones. The node it moves to must be connected to a zone that is adjacent to at least one of the two zones that its current node is between. In the resource phase, players will generate a number of silver and or insight dependent upon the positions of their units and leader. They will then be able to use those resources to draft a number of cards from the tavern equal to how many units are in their homestead. Cards drafted can be either new units, which are then put into any zone in their village, except the battlefield, new knowledge cards, which are put face down into your sacred grove, or new prophecy cards, which are added to your hand. It's important to note that any knowledge and or prophecy card drafted can be specifically chosen from their respective decks. If there are any units in the battlefield area of the active player's village, a battle can occur during the battle phase. In this phase, the active player declares which of his units will be attackers. Then, the opponent may assign one blocker located in their battlefield or wall areas to each specific attacker with the caveat that the leader is able to block two attackers at once. Attacking units then target their blockers and deal damage to them equal to their attack strength minus shields. Attacking units that were not assigned a blocker may attack any unit in the village, including the leader. Blocking units will not do any damage to their attackers. If a unit's health is reduced to zero, the owner will place it into their graveyard. If its health is not reduced to zero, place a number of wound tokens on the unit equal to how much damage it received. And finally, in the end of turn phase, any game effects triggered by the phrase at the end of your turn are resolved before your opponent becomes the active player. Play continues in this fashion until the moment your opponent's leader's health is reduced to zero. At that point, you are victorious. In the unlikely event that both leaders' health is reduced to zero at the same time, 
the feud continues until it can be resolved another day by your eventual successors. But the game ends in a draw. With more than 290 cards offered in the core game, Feud the Seer's Prophecy has a variety of combinations available to its players. Will you choose a more aggressive strategy and go for your opponent's jugular, or will you focus more on your economy? No matter the strategy you employ, time is of the essence and it is also short. A slight miscalculation here or there, or your opponent choosing to do something you didn't anticipate could be all the advantage they need to bring your village down in bloodshed and flame. The seer's final words echo in the minds of the two clan leaders as they look across the battlefield at spines of smoke rising from fires warming their enemies. The feud must be settled through blood and through will. No one remembers what started the feud, but there can be no doubt that the seer's call will bring it to an end. So if you found anything in this video that I've shared with you to be of interest, I'm sure the good people at MindGate Studios will appreciate it if you were to go take a look at their crowdfunding campaign and see what they have to offer you. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please also consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons. We'll hope to continue seeing you right here on the flip side. Take care.